Hello, my name is Ricky Doolan, and I'm a proud British man. I'm also a businessman, and as any businessman, I represent my interests. I want to say this to you. I love Zimbabwe. It's dear to my heart as a nation and as a people. But I am a British businessman, and I don't apologize for being that. However, I'm so disappointed that a good man who is passionate about Zimbabwe is being penalized by imperialist-funded affiliates of Al Jazeera, simply for trying hard to help fellow Zimbabweans. Firstly, I want to lay some facts down. Fact, fake news media is rife and it's so active that you can never believe a narrative that mainstream media is pushing, especially one that is state funded like Al Jazeera. Another fact, the documentary that's circulating right now is brutally edited to portray a false narrative. I'm not a gold dealer and I never have been. So what they're pushing is a false narrative. Another fact, these fake journalists, business people, they approached me with the now known to be a false proposal, of course, of building a $1.2 billion hotel in Victoria Falls in Zimbabwe, which would have been an outstanding achievement for the nation and its people, whilst it would have also lined up with Ambassador Angel's mandate of increasing the brand of Zimbabwe. They are presenting this documentary like it's a secret investigation, yet it wasn't a secret investigation. I know it, and the other people involved also know this. Yes, they placed cameras in certain angles that made it look like it was without our knowledge, but there was a prior conversation minutes before where we talked about them filming a few minutes of our conversation to tell their bosses and show their bosses this was a legitimate negotiation taking place. So we therefore thought that they'd tell us when, but now we realize that their real intentions were to record the president of Zimbabwe, but that plan failed. When the doubts were confirmed that these fakers might not have been having real intentions, the intelligence blocked them from seeing the president, whom they really wanted to see. That was the person they really wanted to see and film and record, the president. So no wonder Ambassador Angel was left in the middle with a decision to make. One, he had to make them think he was the highest person that they could have met in the country. And the other side of it was that, just in case they were actually genuine people, which was my sentiments, I really thought they were genuine people, just in case we needed to string them along as much as possible to play at their own game kind of style, to get them to feel like they're not abandoned in the, the deal we were negotiating. So this is why call decoys were used. The first lady, as the first lady, and Henrietta. These, the intelligence supplied before we got into the negotiation period. And why would they do this, you might ask? It's simple, it's a simple play. It's because the people that were coming to do the negotiations were in doubt. There was doubt that they were legitimately who they said they were. So that needed to be done to test if they were legitimate on this. And they came across genuine to me. But of course, Ambassador believed the intelligence reports. Zimbabwe. You've been wrongfully given painful sanctions. They want to control where and who you sell your gold to and the rest of your produce to and even the price thereof. Please wake up to the reality and the real scam that's taking place here. It's so plain to see. Anyone can hate me all they want based on a lie, but facts literally have no feelings. I love Zimbabwe and I hold it close to my heart and I always will. But I'm British first, and I might have said some very ugly statements during those films, but my statements were done as a businessman, wanting to make an impactful, history-changing deal that would be remembered forever. Plus, I used such words to make them feel comfortable that their investment was going to be secure. And then we use these words in business. This is how we talk in our negotiations. It's dog eat dog. So finally, everyone, Please wake up to this. I believe it's the words of the former president, Obama, if I get this right. And he once said, time is coming where technology will make you say what you didn't say. And now is the time. Always question this one. The one controlling the narrative is the one that must be questioned. Wake up. Something is seriously underfoot. Listen to this. 
We've never moved gold. It's a fact. We've never made money on gold. It's a fact. We've never taken money out of Zimbabwe. It's a fact. These evil fake news reporters pretended they wanted to build a hotel for 1.2 billion in Victoria Falls that would later, after completion, have a store that sold gold items and different things. And the ambassador said that to make that happen, you have to agree with the, the government. So I'm trying to secure a monumental investment for Zimbabwe. They then manufactured a series of conversations that they could draw out buzzwords that later they would manipulate in their video edit to frame us as illegal gold mafias. When the truth is, they are the real, real mafia.